Angels cry, holy, all creation cry, holy, you will lift it high, holy, holy forever, hear your people sing. The King of Kings, holy, you will always be holy, holy forever. And the angels cry, holy, all creation. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Lord, your people oh, cry holy unto you, O oh God. Oh, you're holy, O oh God, and oh, Oh, Ramashake, Jam, 
The same yesterday, today, and forever. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, we worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, we just give thanks, Lord. You're holy. All heavens cry, holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord God Almighty. And Father, we thank you that we know you, O God. And Lord, that you have sent your Holy Spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And this morning, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, O God, that we have come into your house to worship you. And that we know, Father, Lord, we are touched by your holiness. And Lord, we thank you that we can be holy, set apart for you, O God, because of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So we give thanks, O God, as we commit this morning to you. We thank you for your holy presence in our midst, refining us, O God, empowering us, strengthening us, and telling us, O God, Lord, that we are deeply and greatly loved by you this morning. We give thanks in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
praise God, please stand. Hallelujah. Let's spray fragrance upon ourselves. Uh, the spiritual fragrance. I am deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Look at somebody and say, you are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Together, we are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. The next thing is, three things very, very important. Love God, love people, love life. Praise God, you may be seated. This morning, we're going to look at Joshua chapter 5. Let's turn to Joshua chapter 5. 2, your, two 4 is a year of enter in. And chapter 5 of Joshua is preparing. You know, the Bible tells us that the Israelites is being prepared. The second generation Israelites, they were being prepared to enter in. Hallelujah. This is the year 2024. God want us to enter in. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea. Wow, land and sea. The land and the sea. The land and the sea. The Israelites, they are facing, you know, these people supposed to be their adversary, okay? And by the land, by the sea, okay? And the Bible says that they heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan, from before the children of Israel. Until we had crossed over, their heart melted. It is the Lord who is strong in our midst that caused our enemy to tremble. It is because the Lord is strong in you that caused the enemies, hallelujah, to be fearful. Amen. The Bible says that their heart melted. Amen. When you are strong in the Lord, the devil will be afraid of you. You think the devil won't be able to recognize who you are? in the kingdom, in the spirit realm. You know, remember the seven sons of Skivas? You know, they came before the demon-possessed person. So this is what is the Paul I know, Jesus I know. Who you are, I do not know. Okay? So, let's live our life in such a way. Let's walk before the Lord. Let the Lord and His kingdom be strong in us. And even the enemies heard about, you know, so-and-so from Tenang first. The enemy trembled. The Bible says that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. You know, the first time when I came across this portion of Scripture, I was using my finger to point myself, who, me, you know, and that the enemies will be trembled. I'm not referring to so much of human being. Who, me, the enemies will be trembled. Wow, could that happen to me? Because I've been known as Mr. Nice. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, I try to nice to people, the men, the women, the elderly, the children. And so I, I don't think ever I am able to cause myself to come to a point whereby that the enemy, upon hearing my name, their hearts will be melted. But I caught a hold of that. You know, that as we walk in the Lord, that's the reason why Joshua, you know, God spoke to him and says that, be strong and courageous. Be not fearful. Be strong and courageous. And over the years, as I feed on the Word of God, over the years, as I involved in intercessory prayer, over the years, the Lord begin to just aggressively, you know, work within my spirit. And then when I pray, I begin to have that authority. I begin to pray with that unction. Hallelujah. Amen. There was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Because you are a child of God. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Because of that, there's no spirit in the enemies any longer because you are a new creation. You are more than a conqueror. Together, let's say, I am who God says, I am. I have what God says, I have. And I can do what God says, I can do. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Look at somebody and declare loud and clear. You are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. And you can do what God says you can do. It was so powerful, this confession. I probably have shared with you before. I don't intend to go into detail. But that happened to me when I started to spring back. That was because God spoke into my spirit when I was in America. I was down, I was out. I took over this church for two years. Just after two years, you know, I was so drained because of all the negative remarks as well as complaint that, you know, I end up, one day I look into the mirror. I say, am I really that bad? Am I really that wicked? 
Am I really that useless? Am I really that hopeless? Am I really that arrogant? Am I really that proud? Am I really that not negotiable? I was a little bit confused of my identity. I came to a point I wanted to throw in the towel. But it was in America, God spoke to me. Forget about what people say about you. Forget about what, you know, you say about yourself. Forget about even what the devil said about you. More important is, what do I say about you? Then I begin to understand, wow, there's this one aspect that I need to rise up. I need to recognize who I am in Christ because it never bothers me. And more important is, in school, I was a good student. I was a good prefect. Outside, I was a good fellow to all the guys, you know. And I missed the nice in Bible school because I got a van. At that point, not many people got a van. At the most, in the 70s, they forgot a motorbike, you know. But I got a van because not I own it. The church happens to buy a second-hand van. I still remember it's a green Toyota. Don't remember the model, but it is an uh, important model. They call it Recon, okay? And so because I'm the only one got van, so many times when they're hungry, they want to eat something, collectively they will make some order. Then I will go to, those of you who are from PJ, you will know what I'm talking about, Medan Solera. You know, it's like a hawker center whereby you're able to order all kinds of Malay food, Chinese food, ice kacang and all that. So I will get tapa for all of them. Sometimes I will take some of them down. I do things out of my way because I felt good being appreciated and being acknowledged as Mr. Nice. But one day, God tear that apart. God says to stop being Mr. Nice. Okay, no more. Don't enjoy that image as Mr. Nice. I want you to be what I want you to be. So when I was in Penang, when the Lord began to just dealt with me in that aspect, I said, I never knew that I need to be what you want me to be, have what you want me to have, and do what you want me to do. I was running around practically, you know, helping people as well at the same time, be nice to everybody, and whenever they need help, I'll go out of my way. God says that you need to put on a new identity because I've appointed you, you know, to lead Penang first, to enlarge, stretch forth, lengthen, and strengthen. It takes more than a Mr. Nice to grow my church. It takes more than a Mr. Nice to lead my congregation. It takes more than a Mr. Nice, Mr. Nice, you know, to lead the church onward, upward, forward, you know, and go beyond. Then I suddenly realized that, hey, I didn't know that that was what God wanted me to be, you know. So from that point onwards, I begin to accept my role as I am who God says I am. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. I'm more than conquerors. I'm the light of the world. Hallelujah. I'm an ambassador of Christ. Wow. With all these adjectives, it adds dimensions to who I am, the way I carry myself. I also enjoy, quite enjoy being a joker, you know, doing funny things, saying funny things. And then as long as my contemporary, my friends, they all laugh, I thought that's just you get the, the, the center of attention. Uh. You know, you, you thought that, wow, you know, you're so popular and all that. But the Lord says, no. That doesn't mean to say you cannot joke. That doesn't mean to say that you cannot smile. That doesn't mean to say that you cannot have fun. But I want you to do it in such a way that people will know that you have been earmarked by me. You are a child of God. So I, I stopped doing things out of my flesh, out of my impulse to entertain people. But rather, I am who God says I am. You know, the bottom line is at least I know that I am Christ's ambassador. I can have what God says I can have. So I just want to thank the Lord that with that, the Lord also opened my eyes to see that you can have everything that I want you to have. Everything. I begin to search the Bible. You know, I look at the life of King Solomon. I realize that he has got wisdom. I also realize that he is so blessed materially. You know, I begin to search the life of the prophets, prophet Isaiah, prophet Elijah. I realize that they have got an anointing. So God says that all this you can have. I say, wow. The Lord says, yes, whatever that is in the Bible, you can have, you know. So God says, give up your small ambitions and we'll give you a big one. Many times we think in terms of we pray and if God give us a car, Wow. And if ever God give us a house, wow, it's like we hit the jackpot. But God says it's more than that, you know. Look at the cattle over the thousand hills. They are mine. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Everything is mine. When I'm hungry, I will not ask you for any food or drink, you know. But I am the Lord your God, the Lord of hosts, you know, of heaven and the earth. And so when I begin to understand, wow, what can I have? 
Amen. In Christ Jesus, I'm so blessed in every aspect. I can have authority, power. I also can have His anointing when I minister. I I also can have His wisdom. I can have His protection. At the same time, I have vision. At the same time, I'm full of action. At the same time, I know that God wants me to fulfill the Great Commission. Hallelujah. And leading the congregation along with me, you know, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Listen, it's so important for you to pray for your leader, for your pastors. If your pastors, your leaders are going nowhere, you will go nowhere as well, you know? So it's important that you pray that your pastors, your church leaders, they become the men and women of God following Jesus. As long as they're following Jesus onward, upward, you come along and you too will be treading the path of onward and upward and forward to God be the glory. I can do. What else I can do? When I went to those career church growth, I look at all the speakers and all, all that. It's like I say, wow, you know, can preach so well, you know. Wow, can minister so well, you know. Wow, they have got ministry. God says that you can do likewise and you can do even more than that, you know, in your Malaysia context. And it is true. Over the years, I've seen how God blessed not only the pastors, me and the pastors, the pastoral team, but also our deacons uh, and our church leaders, and they can do what God wants them to do. To summarize it all, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So here it says that there are enemies up in the mountain and the enemy along the coast. These are kings, uh, the Bible says, that their heart melted. Amen. Do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? I tell you, anywhere, everywhere you go, you know, the enemy is looking at you. Maybe you're not aware, but you're being earmarked. Their heart is being melted. They don't show it, but you are special. When you step out of the church, when you are out onto the road, you're being earmarked. Hallelujah. God says that these are my sons and my daughters. They are special. They are the apple of my eyes. Look at somebody and say, I am the apple of his eyes. Come on. One more time. Yes, you are the apple of his eyes. We are the apple of his eyes. Amen. Now, then in verse 2, At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knife for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the heel of foreskin. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all of them men of war, okay? They are men of war. That means they are very courageous, very manly and had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt, okay? For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. About, about 40,000 of them, uh, somewhere when I read the commentary. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness to all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. Men of war. Men of war means, here it speaks about, they are men of experience and they have been to war and they are soldiers, they are mighty. One thing that caused them to face out, one thing that caused them to like being written off, it is because did not obey the voice of the Lord. It does not matter in the past how powerful you have been. It does not matter in the past how mightily God has used you. It does not matter in the past, you know, how much you have accomplished for the Lord. But if ever you allow that voice of disobedience to take over and you walk away from God and you will be going downhill, you know. I've seen so many preachers, both internationally as well as locally, they were mightily used by God, Okay. But when they choose not to obey the voice of the Lord, it is very sad uh, that eventually they have been written off, so to speak. Then here it says that, To whom the Lord saw that he would not show them the land which the Lord had shown to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place, for they were uncircumcised, because they have not been circumcised on, on the way. 
So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal. So simply said, the old group of warriors passed away. Okay, Not able to enter into the land of milk and honey because of what? Disobedience. Not because they don't have the strength, nor because they don't have the experience. Neither it is because the Lord forgotten about them. It is their own doing. All of us here, by free will, we choose to give our hearts to Jesus. I pray that you will walk with the Lord all the way, not half-heartedly. If ever, if ever we're being laid aside, it is because of our own choice. It is because we choose not to follow somewhere. You know, we follow Jesus all the way, but then somewhere, like Judas Iscariot, you know, like Demas, the Bible says, they walk away. They love the world. That's what Paul said. Okay? So they're being circumcised. Gilgal, that place is Gilgal. Gilgal means it is a land that you arrange the stone in a circular form. Can I have the picture? Okay? Gilgal means the land that they organize with stones in a circular manner and offer that place as a place of sacrifice unto the Lord. So circumcision, it is not an act of compulsion, but because it is the covenant that God has cut with Abraham. Let me have the verse in Genesis. It says that Abraham circumcised Isaac. Yeah when he was eight days old. As God has commanded him, it is a covenant that God says that this will be the mark of, I have a covenant with Abraham. I will bless him. I will bless his descendants. I will make them the head and not the tail. He will be the father of many nations and multitudes and multitudes like the stars of heaven. So it is an act of worship, circumcisions. Now I'd like you to know, these circumcisions, even though in the New Testament, we don't practice it. Okay? But Paul tells us that we need to walk circumspectly. What does that mean? That means we need to walk our life in such a way that it is in line with the teaching of the Scripture, morally as well as ethically, and we need to live our life. Even though we don't go through the ceremony of circumcisions, some of you are probably wondering what it's all about. I will just mention it casual, okay? The male private part, okay? Circumcisions. But it does mean that Paul says that our heart needs to be circumcised, okay? That means we have to guard our heart in such a way. Now, one of the aspects of circumcisions, medically speaking, it means cleanliness. So, when Paul referred to we walk circumspectly, that means we walk according to the Word of God and being set apart and being holy, righteous, okay? Clean before Him. Knowing that the days are evil, Paul says, we are learning to redeeming our time. Do not be like people who are outside. So, that's what happened when the people, they were being circumcised the second generation, Joshua circumcised them, and therefore their place is called Gilgal. Now, something very interesting. Eh? Now, the children of Israel came in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. And when they ate of the produced land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain, and on the very same day, then the manna ceased on the day after they have eaten the produce of the land. The moment when they start eating the produce of the land, okay, the land which God promised, filled with milk and honey, then the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. Now, something quite interesting, I need to do a little bit of throwback, okay? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, talking about the crossing of Jordan. The crossing of Jordan signify means what? This group of people that came out of Egypt, but not their parents, their parents passed away. Now they go through the baptism of Jordan. Their parents go through the baptism of the Red Sea. Okay? So they go through the baptism of Jordan. Next moment was Joshua instructed them to be circumcised. That means not only you get baptized, but you need to live your life in such a way that reflects, you know, that you are a child of God. Then move on from here. When they begin to eat the produce of the land, manna stop. Some of this encounter that we have in our Christian walk, 
just before we come to know the Lord, just before that, it's as though like it's also easy for us to pick up spiritual encouragement. We turn here and then you have this daily break. Then we go somewhere. It's as though like the rainbow is speaking to us. And then we move about, you know, and then uh, Christian magazine and will just minister to us. And then we got baptized. And then as we go on in our Christian walk, first week, second week, suddenly we feel that how come the inspiration all gone and all that, you know? I'm telling you this. It's nothing strange, okay? The Bible tells us that the Israelites, somehow the heavenly manna stopped dropping. But they have to start eating from the land which is filled with milk and honey. And as a young Christian, we find it so easy to get inspired. But into weeks and months, and suddenly we realize that we have to dig into the Word. You know, and we have to find the spiritual food ourselves by going into the Word. And that's very normal, okay? That's very normal. Even for the Israelites, when they enter into the promised land, so to speak, you know, they have eaten the produce of the land, manna just stopped. So it's not really a kind of like something to be alarmed about. It is an indication that God is saying that you've got to roll up your sleeves. Hello, you know, and then you have to start feeding your soul, your spirit, and your mind with the Bible. Because the Bible contains the manner from heaven, the bread of life. And his name is called J-E-S-U-S. So as we beg God for, give us this day our daily bread. And the Lord is saying that, start digging, start going into my word. It is all there. Now, after they get converted, uh, they, after they got baptized, circumcised, They've been told to live their life to glorify God and also start eating the produce of the land. The next thing is the problem that they're encountering. You become a Christian. That doesn't mean to say that all your problems immediately wiped away. There will be still problems, okay? What are the problems? The war of Jericho of finance, the war of Jericho of marital conflict, the Jericho war of illness, terminal sickness, the Jericho war of losing a job, looking for a career path. There are so many challenges around us. What shall we do? Now, exactly, that's where the Bible indicates to us this we shall do. Now, in chapter 6, let's look at chapter 6, okay? Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. When you look at your Jericho, whether it has to do with a financial situation or a marital conflict, you know, or perhaps terminal illness or your career path. It is like, it is tightly shut up. Neither can anyone come in nor go out. There is no way to look for a gap in between that you can breathe, okay? However, the Bible tells us this one thing, that long before Joshua, together with the rest, they come across Jericho. He got an encounter with the Lord. Uh, let's look at Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Doesn't that sound so much like us? What do I mean by that? Joshua. Okay, he go through the Jordan. Joshua, he himself also being circumcised. Joshua, aware that the manna from heaven stopped dropping, so he had to start digging into God's word. That's where he been instructed that you have to meditate upon the word of God day and night. Now, Joshua has got a big, big problem. He has to lead this group of people beyond, go beyond this uh, Jericho. So, but Jericho is securely shut up, okay? None went out, none came in. So he has got a big problem. He cannot make any advances. Are you facing problem as a child of God? In spite of all the wonderful encounter that you have, so you come to a point whereby you're wondering, I don't know whether God is for me or God is against me. Joshua has got that mindset. If God is for me, everything will just be okay. If God is not for me, nothing will be okay. No, he, he asked the wrong question. The Bible says, 
it is not whether I am for you or I am against you. You know, verse 14, so he said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Meaning to say, I've come to you. The point is, okay, are you willing to listen what I have got to say? So many times we think that God has to be on my side, but are we on God's side? So many times we think that God has to be the one that come to us, solve our problem, and then make our life comfortable. No, you have come to a point whereby, you know, you have crossed over Jordan, died to self. You have also allowed yourself to go through the ceremony of circumcisions. In our case, it's to circumcise our hearts. Okay, so we have gone through that stage. We also come to a point whereby we are digging into the Word of God. We want to know more about Jesus and all that, uh, and how to grow, how to be His disciples. So now the very vital question is this. Now Joshua said it correctly. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, meaning to say, the man stood opposite him with his sword. The commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, yes, you have asked the right question. What is it that the Lord will say to his servant? Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. Joshua did so. Meaning to say, Joshua now understood. Whatever I'm facing, after the Jordan River, after the circumcisions, and moving on, meditating on God's Word, whatever I'm facing, I'm not going to ask, what is it that for me? But rather, what am I supposed to do? I'm at your service. I'm willing to surrender all. A surrender life! That's exactly what the captain of the Lord's army is looking for. He is raising up to be a mighty soldier. You need to learn to take order. So many times we expect the Lord to take our order. But the Lord wants us to take His order. Not just once, not just twice, not just three times, but for the rest of our life. Amen. How many of you, you are willing to, to take order from the Lord? Can I see your hand? Yes. Amen. we got to learn to take order from the Lord. And the Lord says, take off your sandals, off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. So, we see here that he has got a problem. Jericho was securely shut up. There's no way to crack open Jericho. He has got an encounter with the Lord. Because of your encounter with the Lord, and the Lord revealed that plan to him. Simply in verse 2, chapter 6, verse 2. And the Lord says to Joshua, See, very simple, straightforward, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's kings and the mighty men of Velo. Okay? God gave him a promise. So many times, you know, God has promised us that he will take care of our situation. Financial situation, marital conflicts, you know, or career situation, or even terminal illness. But then there are things that God wants us to listen carefully. Don't just run off by hearing just one sentence, see, I've given Jericho into your hand. There are still, what happened was that, you know, a warfare that is involved. Further instructions to be given. Now, God gave him these instructions. This you shall do six days. The seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of the ram's horn before the ark. And the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, then when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Wow. This is being explained to Joshua and telling Joshua this is exactly what I want you to do you know for six days you go around it once the Jericho war and then on the seventh day seven times but there are certain formations that God instructed very clearly can I have that picture so it was when Joshua had spoken to the people the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horns before the Lord advanced blow the trumpet and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them then the armed men went before the priest who blew the trumpet, and the real guard came after the ark, while the priest continued blowing the trumpet. 
But this is a picture concerning, you know, before the priest that blow the horn, there's a group of soldiers. And then there's this priest. So it is like going into the spiritual warfare. There is this praise, there's this worship uh, that is involved. Most importantly, it is the presence of the Lord. In this picture, it is covered with blue cloth. And behind there is this real God. And so you're going around your problem through praise, through worship, encircling your problem with the presence of the Lord. Joshua did not come out how to solve his problem or how to solve the national problem to destroy the wall of Jericho, to bring down the wall of Jericho by his own idea. It is God's given idea. Therefore, we can consult this strategy. Whatever problem you are facing, have you ever thought about? Pray over it. How long does it take, what do you think, for them to walk around Jericho? You think it is like walking just within the circumference of MMC? Probably it will take about half a day or even more, you know? And so that means there's this non-stop of bombarding the problem with praise, with worship, with the presence of the Lord, going down on your knees and keep interceding just for one day. Second day, do the same thing. Third day, do the same thing. Fourth day, do the same thing. Fifth day, do the same thing. Sixth day, do the same thing. But so often, we just say a, a meal prayer, M-E-A-L. Lord Jesus, thank you for the food. Lord, we commit our problem to your hand. And Lord, you help us to heal this person, my relatives. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Hey, that is not Jericho strategy. That is just you and I, we conveniently uh, clear our conscience, trying to just whisper a prayer, and hopefully that God listens. I'm sure God listens. God listens to the point that He knows how to single out. Do you know or not? When God wanted to destroy Jericho, He knows how to single out those individuals whose heart, they are for Him. There's one person called Rahab. When Joshua sent the spies, you know, to spice out the place and all that, and Rahab was the one that said, Welcome. I know God is using your army mightily, and our heart melted. But here I am, instead of trusting my king and my king's army, I'm angry and trust myself to both of you. Both of you look like you don't have those armor and spear and all that, but you have got this great and mighty God. We heard that he has done great damage to the neighboring countries. The Bible says what? Rahab, the harlot, the Bible says God singled her out. And not only that, because she made the spies promise, not only you saved me, you saved my own family, but you also saved my brother, my sisters, their family. Therefore, their entire clan. The Bible says that being spared, only Rahab and the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, because she hide the messengers that we send. Wow. Listen, you think God is not aware of your need? But many times we just act like a consumer, if you know what I'm talking about. Prayer become like just mere mention. Then we hope to see the Jericho wall come down. No. Each one of us, we need to take responsibility, you know, to go around our Jericho wall. You know, you have to go around your Jericho wall one day at a time and go around it and pray and pray and pray until you have that peace that you know that, you know, God is asking you to, okay, enough for today. And next day you pray again over and over and over and over again. But you're saying that I'm working. I can't all the time just keep praying. Well, praise God. That's where the Holy Spirit come in. It says that pray without ceasing. Even when you're doing your work, when you're at a keyboard or handphone or you're traveling in the grab or you're attending to your clients in your heart, you can always keep, you know, praying, praying nonstop. And so the key is this. Joshua has got a problem. Joshua had got a personal encounter with the Lord. He chose to submit, and after he has chosen to submit, he will not move away from that position of submissions. He heard the promise of God, and then God gave him a plan, and he carried out. The Bible says the Israelites faithfully, okay, go around it one day, once. Next day, once. Third day, go around the entire city of Jericho, once. Okay, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Come to the seventh day, 
go around it how many times? Seven times or probably it's like from morning, still dark. By the time when they finish going around seven times, it's already midnight. But that was necessary. The Bible says that at the shout, they acted upon what God has told them to do. They shouted, you know. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet. And it happened that when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat. Oh, the power of praying. Praying and praying non-stop. Surrounding your problem. Are you facing a financial problem? You know, sometimes we love to tell people, we love to talk, to tell people so that people can understand us. But you know what? In the case of Jericho War, they were told not to say anything. Just go around it. Just go around it. That means to say, you say to the Lord, you confront your Jericho War in prayer unto the Lord. And not call up this person, call up that person, tell this person, tell that person. Then we wonder why, how come there is no divine intervention. But the Bible tells us that they did it for six days and on the seven days, faithfully, they went around it seven times. And upon the prompting of the Lord, priests blew the trumpet and the people shouted. Wow, fantastic. Miracles happen. Oh, I tell you, the importance of just speak to your Jericho. Don't speak about your Jericho. I still remember, it is my personal encounter. When I took over Penang first, I will go to 286 Macalester Road very early in the morning, as early as 6 o'clock, as early as sometimes 5.30. I will look at the old building and I'll begin to speak. You know, uh, Penang first is a praying church, a praise and power packed church, a peaceful church. I point at the old building in the car park, of course. You know, a uh, propagating church, a possessing church and a prevailing church. A praying church, a praise and power packed church, a peaceful church, a, a personal church, a propagating church, a possessing church. I keep confessing, I keep confessing. Morning after morning after morning. Morning after morning after morning. And there were a lot of, well, we were going through different phases. Huh? There were a lot of confusion. People come, people go, people come, people go, people come, people go. You see? But I keep praying, I keep praying, I keep praying. And then we see, you know, that the Lord gave us songs. We are the Joshua generation. We are the people that they command, you know. And then we begin to see that God begin to raise up people. And then we begin to see that, you know, we acquire Hunza. And then again, begin to see where we are. Now, the battle is even bigger. Why? Because it's over nations and kingdom. But the strategy remains the same. Speak to your Jericho war. Hallelujah. We have seen results over and over again from a smaller scale to be where we are. Hallelujah. Our God remains on His throne. Amen. He can handle any situation. So they were given this plan. But what they require of them is what? Perseverance. And you are saying that, Ayo, pastor, you read the scripture, you know the story, and then you add the word perseverance. Hey, it is truly perseverance. They pray non-stop. Why do I say that? Now, if you were to look at chapter 7, there is this called the battle of AI. You know, that's where they got defeated and there was no perseverance. They say this, no need to consult the Lord. You know, we already defeated our enemy before and this is too small a battle. We can do it. It's not even Jericho War. See how presumptuous they were? See, they gave up in their perseverance. So you and I, this day, before we leave this place, identify your Jericho wall. Could it be finance that is bothering you? Could it be marital conflicts? Could it be terminal illness? Could it be your career? Could it be, you know, something that really bothers you so much? Identify it. And then you need to listen to what God has got to say. Don't say, God, please do something about it. You know, but rather listen to what God has to say. Because Joshua had that personal encounter before he took down Jericho. He met the commander of the army of the Lord. You need to hear from him what does he wants to say to you. To Joshua, he says, the ground where you are standing is holy. Don't ask that silly question. Am I for you or against you? The very fact that God showed up to Joshua, it simply means that God is for him. 
But the point is, he need to understand that it is not his will, but God's will be done. The Lord taught us so many times, even in the Lord's Prayer, we read it so often, and yet we still don't get it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It is his will, his will be done. Hallelujah. You know, and then you need to set aside time. I'm going to circle this Jericho wall of mine every day. Half an hour, one hour. I will intensify it two hours. I will persevere until the Jericho wall came tumbling down. Many have employed the strategy of Jericho wall and they have succeeded. I've seen in our church, you know, there are those who keep praying for their father, mother's salvation and they pray non-stop, you know, non-stop. Weeks and months and all that. And then what happened was the parents came to know the Lord. I'm going to just take this opportunity because this is my personal encounter. Happens to be Pastor Jesse, parents, okay? I still remember I was doing my Form 6. And so because we were from the same church, so I heard that she is able to give me some revision paper. How many of you remember there's a company called Preston that they come up with a revision paper and all that, and then you can use them, you know, question, answer. I went over to see this uh, Pastor Jesse, we make appointment, understood that I won't be invited to go to the house, but I was being told by a Christian brother that the parents are very educated and private person, and so they don't expect boys to show up at the door, you know, to meeting up any of the family members then. I was about very young, doing my form sex and all that. And I still remember, I ride on a bicycle, go to the house in front. She just came out to pass me a stack of notes. I understood that we would not talk to avoid suspicions. I just want that stack of note, you know, for study. And so very graciously, she came out, she passed me that stack of note. But I saw something which she didn't see. They have got two windows. The door is in the center, but they have got two windows. There was this curtain that the things lifted. Then I saw there's a lady, you know, the large cartoon with the kind of a spectacles, very sharp one. And then she was peeping out to make sure that her face is seen. I caught that. It's like an old school teacher masters like that. Wow, I tell you, my heart jerked, you know. I was just thinking, wow, you know. Uh, but I understood that it must be one of the family members. Could be her auntie or could be her mother and all that. Fast forward, I went down to KL Bible School. Uh, then eventually, you know that, years later. And then I think uh, Pastor Jesse also came back from Kedah teaching and all that. And then she always mentioned this, to pray for the mother's salvation to pray for the Father's salvation consistently. So when I came back, of course, from a teenager, uh, from six, you know, you fast forward, a married person, uh, I was asked, could you please come to my house to pray for my father? He is ready uh, to accept the Lord. Of course, I've never met that father. I've never really known the mother. But when I walk in, they prayed until uh, their family members collectively, they prayed until weeks, months, years. And imagine, I was a secondary student. By the time when I came back, I was holding a diploma uh, in theological study, a grown man. And then when I walk in, and the father respectfully, a very strict man, respectfully, Oh, okay, you are the pastor. Follow me word for word to accept Christ. And then later came for church services. Praise God. But not the mother. The mother, not immediately. I recognize the son. Hey, that's an old lady. This lady is the same lady that with that pointed spectacles one. Uh, she was standing there and she was very already. Don't try to be funny, young man. Okay, do what is right. But eventually, she also came to know the Lord. The power of Jericho prayer. It was not just breathe a prayer and then things just happen. They pray consistently between the sister, sister. I think later on migrated to overseas, but they're always in touch with prayer, 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 prayer. And both parents came to know the Lord. So by the time when 
the mother came to know the Lord and attended the Hokkien service. Every time at Hunza Hokkien service, the mother will come to me and say, Pastor, hold my hands and all that. Fantastic, the transformation. The Jericho war of suspicions, the Jericho war of resistance all came down. Uh, so claim me to be their pastor, their pastor, their pastor. There's another family, I will not mention name. The same thing, the Jericho war came down. Prayed for a long, long time. And you know, we pastor, we try to be nice. So what happened was there, during church anniversary, you will not remember who. Anyway, I won't review the name. But you will remember the occasion. Remember last time, we always have it at Silingman, at Anson Road, the, the Chinese restaurant. Uh, that's where we hold our church anniversary, the month of August, you know. And so church members will love to bring their parents. And some of their parents are Tao Ke, really Tao Ke. They are the boss of the company. So when they introduce to me, Pastor, this is my father, uh, I say, uh, Uncle, they look at me. They don't even bother to reciprocate. Too young. They were already in their late 50s. Uh, they are big Tao Ke and all that. Uh, that was another one also. Uh, drove Mercedes, come and pick the sons at 26 Michael's Road. Being the pastor, I also go near and say, Hello, uh, uncle. Don't even bother to look at me. Drove the Mercedes away. Zoom! You know, just like that. Fast forward. Their children never stop praying for them. One thing about Penang first, uh, you know, God has raised up many, many young intercessors. They pray non-stop. They pray non-stop. They pray non-stop. Wow. One after another, their parents came to know the Lord. Uh, talk about this Harleman one first. Big boss eventually came to know the Lord. Same thing. Uh, pastor, pastor. Lord, far away, see me. Pastor, pastor. And I always say, pastor, can we go out to have breakfast or lunch? Uh? Once a week, I was thinking about finish la, once a week. How to cater for that? Uh? Now, this is the Tao Ke that asked for once a week. And then there's the other one. Uh, that came with Mercedes one. Also the same thing came to know the Lord already. After they said, can we make appointment? Can we have dim sum in the morning? I was just thinking, <laughs> how am I going to cater for all those uh, uncle and aunties? Uh? Of course, we try to and they are very uh, understanding. Uh? They are very understanding. But the job was never done just on the surface. They are old, so they got hospitalized. And then we visit them in the hospital. They are even more touched. Are you? You don't have to come. You got so much work to do. Why do you come, Pastor? You can visit somebody else. I say no. We just want to make sure that you're okay. We pray with you and all that. They were so touched. I tell you, it's a total different person altogether. The war of very cold, aloof, resistance. You know, the war of unbelief, and then trying to like. Tell you off, go away. You know, who do you think you are? All broken down because their children prayed for their salvation. Their children prayed for them to fit into the church life. Their children prayed for them to continue to love God with all their hearts and soul, their mind. Praise God. The wall of Jericho will come down. Then there are other walls of Jericho. I look at some of my contemporaries, come from very, very poor family. Very, very poor family. You know, but they love Jesus and they serve the Lord as a lay person. But you know what? Today, God has blessed them and their family, the junior, some of them studying to be doctor. Some of them studying to be pharmacies. Some of them, you know, different, different one of them. Uh, they're involved in this uh, professional field. The war of Jericho, it didn't happen just overnight or just whispering a prayer, but rather it was consistently Oh, I tell you, like the priests, as well as the Ark of the Covenant, as well as the army, as well as the soldier, as well as the real God, they keep going around it, going around it, the wall of Jericho, going around it. They take the word of God seriously. They keep going around it. Church, we first need to move up, step up our level of prayer, not just saying prayer, superficial prayer. We need to identify the Jericho war. Sometimes 
it's so convenient for us to blame. Eh, because ah, the preaching like that, man, so we end up like that, law, you know. There, you see, like, the pastor didn't pray enough, man. There's some of my family are like, like that, law. It has never been that it is Joshua's job alone to walk around the wall of Jericho. He took the people with him as God has planned, instructed. Because when he saw the problem that Jericho was tightly shut, no one can come out, go in, he knew that it's beyond him. So he encountered the commander of the Lord, you know, and the Lord says that, take off your shoes. This place is holy. Submit your will to mine. And so the next thing is he did that. God sees his intention that he wants to follow through. And so God gave, gave him this plan. And the plan is to go around Jericho. First of all, let there be the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God. So when you bombard your Jericho wall, you know, begin to just raise your hand, praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Begin to just trust God. The Ark of the Covenant is very important. Go around it. But nothing happened. So when you start to pray, nothing happened. But don't ever think that nothing happened. Something is happening in the heavenly realm and it will also eventually you know, happen in the physical realm. The heavenly realm will impact the earthly realm. They went around six times, nothing happened. And they go for it six times a day, nothing happened. But they persisted, persisted, bang, the wall came down. Some of us, we may have to go through six times a day. And then seven times on the last day. After they go another cycle of six times a day. And then seven times on the last day. Perhaps you have to go through many, many, many cycles. Many, many, many cycles. Many, many, many cycles. And eventually, the Jericho wall will come down. I suppose Brother Kibing wouldn't mind if I just mentioned a little. When Brother Kibing introduced me to his father and his mother, they are very successful people. The father, I met him, so I said, Uncle, he was very polite. He nodded his head. After that, he can sit one corner. And the mother, I tried to converse and tell the mother, how are you? We are from Penang. The mother just smiled. Uh, but the mother has got away. The mother keeps telling us, eat, eat, eat. I cook for you. Eat, eat, eat. So because when you eat, you don't talk, ma. Right not, huh? So eat, 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 eat. But you know what? Fast forward, husband and wife, the father became so attached to the church, attached to all of us. And he became a different person. Praise God, gloriously saved. Come on, give the Lord a hand. And then the mother. I think last year, I showed you the video clip. How the Lord touched her and healed her. And she testified. Wow, it was like Jericho war. I know. Sometimes you say, Pastor, you don't understand how impenetrable. I understand. I've seen so many different, different cases, so many different, different situations, so many different, different, you know, circumstances, different people. That include people in my life, my own parents and all that. But we surround them with prayer, prayer, more prayer, intercession, intercession, more intercession. I tell you, the Jericho Wall will come down. Amen? Will you please stand? Hallelujah. Father, you have spoken to all of us that you love us and you have given us, Lord, the land which is filled with milk and honey. In Christ Jesus, our Christian life is indeed a land filled with milk and honey. But there are, Lord, Jericho walls that we are facing. And Lord, it is beyond us. Right now, I commit every of my brothers and sisters here into your hand. I pray, Father, whatever I share based upon your word, that not only they are able to receive it, but they are able to put it to practice that each one of them will look straight at their own Jericho war. It could be a war of financial disaster. It could be a war of marital conflict. It could be a war of terminal illness of loved ones. It could be a war of confusing career choice. It could be, you know, a relationship like a Jericho war. There's no more communication. But whatever that Jericho war may be represented here, this morning, Lord, we want to submit to you. And Lord, the place where we stand is holy. And Lord, you will take over our Jericho war as we do our part to pray and to pray and to pray and to surround our problem, our Jericho war. Lord, surround it 
literally pray over it. One hour, two hours, three hours. And maybe someday we pray seven times a day. Hallelujah. Oh God, and we pray again. And we still don't see, Lord, the wall coming down, but we will continue to pray. And the day will come. Suddenly, the wall came down. Our loved ones, those who do not believe you, come to know Jesus. Hallelujah. Suddenly, we are blessed with a sum of money. Hallelujah. To solve our financial crisis. Suddenly, hallelujah, the misunderstanding between husband and wife, Lord, is being Iron out Suddenly Lord that you lead us To the right career choice Suddenly Hallelujah The situation which is impossible Become possible Oh God This is what you have promised us Lord We are to recognize our problem Have a personal encounter with you Understand your plan And be persistent Hallelujah The Jericho war Will come down And everyone said Amen and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, hear your people While you are still standing How many of us We have got Jericho walls That we need to pray over And see the Jericho wall come down Can I see your hand Lift it up Lift it up Lift up your hand Now speak to your Jericho wall Hallelujah Father you see hand being raised all over Lord we don't know what to do The wall is too thick The wall is too tall The wall is too high But Lord we pray Even right now Lord, as we surround our Jericho wall with prayer, with intercession, pray unceasingly. Oh Lord, we know that that wall will come down. Help us to have patience, to persevere. Like the Israelites, they pray for the first day, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth day. And on the seventh day, they pray seven times. Oh God, you are developing a people with perseverance and patience and willing to intercede. We thank you that you have heard our prayer. Lord, not so much of the wall will come down immediately But you have heard our prayer You will raise us up Lord As the army of the Lord Because you are the captain of the host of salvation We thank you for this opportunity That we can pray We can grow in intercession We develop patience We can develop perseverance Because faith and patience Inherit the promises of God Hallelujah In the book of Hebrew To God be the glory to God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.